Lesson 1 gives a brief overview of Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager. Policy Enforcement Manager, commonly called PEM, offers a comprehensive set of tools that help you to understand subscriber behavior and to effectively manage network traffic with a wide range of policy enforcement capabilities. Using PEM, you can create tailored service plans and regulate network usage. After a brief introduction to PEM, this Getting Started course focuses on implementing a tiered bandwidth control solution that uses only these highlighted features. So as you can see, there's a lot more to Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager than we will be discussing here. For example, dynamic service chaining to value-added services with PEM enables you to intelligently route traffic to needed services, such as routing only video content to video optimization services, and online charging and quota management enables charging subscribers for the services they use and to set and enforce usage quotas. If you're looking for information about how Policy Enforcement Manager can help your organization implement a solution using any of the other capabilities of PEM that are beyond the scope of this course, you can start by clicking Resources in the upper right corner. There, you can download the manual Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager Implementations and other relevant materials and find a link to F5 Sales who can provide any additional information that you may require. Here is a highly simplified view of some of the elements that are immediately relevant for this course, depicting a subscriber data connection to the internet mediated by Policy Enforcement Manager. As you can see, Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager is placed between subscribers and the network they are trying to access. This enables PEM to intercept subscriber traffic evaluate it, and then control it using the policies that you create and apply. There are, of course, many more components and much more detail and complexity in the actual network topology. In the diagram, you can see a subscriber's user equipment, shown here as a smartphone, but the UE can also have a wired connection. Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager, which fulfills the role of the Policy Control Enforcement Function, or PCEF. Policy Enforcement Manager, however, because of its speed, programmability, and other attributes, is much more capable than a standard PCEF. A RADIUS server and a DHCP server from which PEM can derive important subscriber information. A high-speed logging server, the online charging system by which customers are charged for usage, and finally, the Policy and Charging Rules function, PCRF, sometimes called the Policy Server, with which PEM may interact in many important ways. The Policy and Charging Rules function is in many ways the brains of the system, and the Policy Control Enforcement function, which is a role filled by PEM, the brawn. In a simple implementation, the PCEF enforces policies that reside on the PCRF. But with PEM, the PCEF can be separately configured to make a variety of decisions regarding subscribers and data flow independent of the PCRF. Although this course is about PEM, you'll be hearing more about the PCRF, the Policy and Charging Rules function, because of the important role it plays. What are some of the things that Policy Enforcement Manager can be used for? PEM can help you to be aware of applications running on your network. It can help you to categorize traffic based on subscriber information. PEM can report application distribution and application popularity or subscriber consumption patterns per application over time by geography and so on. In cases such as value added services and data steering, PEM can delegate policy enforcement and traffic processing to a third party product. PEM can be used in security scenarios with URL filtering using a massive local repository of blacklisted URLs and a reputation database. 
You can implement tiered services, which enables customers to pay for only the features and performance they want. You'll see a simple tiered services implementation later in the last lesson of this presentation. For online advertising, PEM can add HTTP content for branding, watermarking, or advertisements. And finally, you can use iRules to customize Policy Enforcement Manager. Because Policy Enforcement Manager is designed for the demands of telecommunications service providers, it runs on only the highest performing F5 devices. PEM also runs on Big IP Virtual Edition, primarily for lab use and testing. Here's a quick opportunity to check your knowledge. Make your selections and then click the Submit button in the lower right hand corner. PEM fits in a very simplified view of a 3G PP network topology and the key components in that topology, and that PEM is supported on the highest performing devices from F5. In this lesson, we'll discuss one of the key features of Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager, Subscriber Awareness. Let's start the lesson about subscribers by briefly diving deeper into the details than is usual in a Getting Started course to talk about one important setting requirement on the subscriber side VLAN. With Policy Enforcement Manager, your configuration should have Service Provider Disaggregation enabled. You can make this setting in the Configuration Utility at Network VLANs VLAN List and then selecting Properties for the subscriber side VLAN. Then select Source Address for the CMP hash setting, allowing all traffic from a client to use the same set of TMMs in this way increases overall performance. For more information about this setting, see Overview of Clustered Multiprocessing in the Resources link at the top right of the screen. What does it mean when we say that Policy Enforcement Manager makes your Big IP device subscriber aware? It means that subscriber data no longer passes through a Big IP device anonymously. Instead, when Policy Enforcement Manager is operating, the source IP address of data packets for a particular subscriber that are passing through the device are mapped to that subscriber's identity. are associated with subscribers, service providers can apply policies to those data flows based on subscriber identity, allowing providers to offer services they're customized for the subscriber. For example, one subscriber may want to have a higher bandwidth limit, while another subscriber may want parental controls that block certain types of traffic. Subscriber awareness starts when PEM receives a data packet with an unknown source IP address. The first goal with Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager is to identify anyone who tries to access the system or at the very least to assign appropriate policies to anyone who tries to access the system. As you'll see here, there are many ways to do that. Here are some of the things that Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager can do when it receives a data packet with an unknown source IP address. PEM can apply an unknown subscriber policy, which defines what privileges, if any, that unknown entities have on the system. Policy Enforcement Manager also applies any global policies with which it has been configured. Global policies are called because they apply to everyone, including anyone who has not been recognized by the system. An example of a global policy is a bandwidth limitation that is applied to everyone who connects to the system. PEM can query the Policy and Charging Rules function to see if the PCRF can provide subscriber information based on the IP address. 
PEM can also use an eye rule to populate subscriber information in the session database. If PEM discovers subscriber information associated with the IP address in question by any of the preceding means, it enforces the appropriate policies for that subscriber. If not, the unknown subscriber policy and global policies dictate the level of access to the system. PEM can examine messages that are being exchanged with the radio server and use the information that it snoops to determine the identity of the subscriber. In a similar fashion, PEM can also snoop messages that are being exchanged with a DHCP server when an IP address is being requested and assigned and use the information it gleans to associate subscriber and IP address. One of the first steps that a service provider must take is to configure Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager with subscriber information. In the interest of simplicity in this brief getting started course, you'll use the configuration utility to add a static subscriber. Static sub to start creating the new subscriber, in the navigation pane under Policy Enforcement Subscribers Static Subscribers, click the green Create button. If you're not sure how to do this, a hint will be provided for you in a moment. The new subscriber screen appears. Note that in the Big IP Configuration Utility, any required settings are marked with a blue bar. The International Mobile Subscriber Identifier, the IMSI, is already selected as a subscriber ID type. We'll enter the IMSI for you in the subscriber ID box. Next, we'll enter the IP address for that subscriber ID. Now click Add to add the subscriber's IP address to the list. Next, you'll apply a policy to the new subscriber. Click Basic Global Policy in the available list. Click the left arrow button to add the policy to the selected box. That's all there is to it. You've entered the settings for a new subscriber who is identified on the system by an international mobile subscriber identifier, has an IP address, and has been assigned a policy that assigns his settings on the system. Now click Finished to complete the process. The new subscriber and settings appear in the subscriber list. In addition to the configuration utility, you can also configure and view information at the command line using the traffic management shell, TMSH. Here you can see an example in which a new subscriber is created using the configuration utility and a command to do the same in TMSH. Click the Next button when you're ready to proceed. There are many TMSH commands specifically for use with Policy Enforcement Manager. Here are the seven highest level commands, followed by a few simple examples of how they are used. Each of these high level entities has its own chapter with usage examples in the TMSH reference guide, which you can view or download using the resources link in the upper right corner. The following video gives you a quick view of using TMSH to upgrade a subscriber by applying a new policy and then viewing the subscriber settings. In the preceding simulation, you created a new subscriber using the Big IP Configuration Utility. Now let's take a look at that subscriber using TMSH. To start, at the command line, type TMSH, and then type PEM. Next, type List Subscriber and the Subscriber ID, which in this example was a subscriber's 15-digit IMSI. 
the information that you configured for this subscriber is displayed. Next, use TMSH to add another policy to the subscriber and use the tab completion feature in TMSH to make the task easier. If you type mod and then press the tab key, TMSH completes the modify command for you. The same goes for typing sub and then pressing tab. Now type the subscriber ID and then policies add left curly brace and press the tab key again to see a list of the policies that are available. Apply the global bandwidth control policy and then execute the list subscriber command again which reveals that the new policy has been added. Here's another opportunity to check in about subscriber awareness in Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager. That when PEM is enabled, data no longer traverses the network anonymously, but is associated with a subscriber identifier. This enables you to monitor subscriber activity and to create and apply enforcement policies. You learned about how Policy Enforcement Manager can handle an unknown IP address the ways in which it can make an association between the address and a subscriber, or how, at the very least, it can apply policies that control access to the system for unknown IP addresses. You saw how you can use the Big IP Configuration Utility to create a new subscriber, and how to use TMSH, and an example of using TMSH to view subscriber information and add a new policy. In this lesson, we take a brief look at the core functionality of Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager, Enforcement Policies, and Enforcement Policy Rules. First, to help eliminate confusion, we should make clear that Big IP uses a variety of entities called policies. For example, Local Traffic Manager uses Local Traffic Policies, and Access Policy Manager has Access Policies. Advanced Firewall Manager has firewall policies, and Application Acceleration Manager has web optimization policies. The policies that you create, apply, and enforce in Policy Enforcement Manager are enforcement policies. In the interest of brevity, we'll often speak simply of policies, but in this course, it will always be enforcement policies that we are speaking of. An enforcement policy is a set of rules that determine what to do with specified types of data traffic. A full discussion of enforcement policies is beyond the scope of this Getting Started course, but here is some key information. You can configure enforcement policies on the Big IP system, or policies can be downloaded from the Policy and Charging Rules function, the PCRF. In this course, we will discuss only policies configured on the Big IP using the Configuration Utility. Policies can be applied globally, that is, to all subscribers, on a per-subscriber basis and on a per-application basis. For example, bandwidth control might be implemented differently for different applications. An enforcement policy rule consists of a set of conditions to be met and an action to be taken. That is, a rule states the conditions that must be met for the rule to apply and the action to take if they do. The conditions in the rule can relate to classification criteria, for example, a rule might apply to all webmail traffic. Flow information, for example, a rule can apply to all traffic directed to a specific destination port. Information, for example, a rule may categorize adult traffic and prevent access to it, and finally, custom criteria, which are custom conditions that you develop. If a policy rule evaluates as true, an action is carried out. For example, dropping the traffic entirely, forwarding the traffic to an endpoint, redirecting HTTP traffic to a URL, applying a quality of service level, enforcing rate control using a bandwidth control policy, and so on. 
There is, of course, much more that can be said about both policies and rules since they are central to the functioning of Policy Enforcement Manager. You can read more about the details in the user manual in the resources link above. Later in this lesson, we'll create and apply an enforcement policy and rules. To sum it up, Policy Enforcement Manager is all about policies. Everything that you do in Policy Enforcement Manager involves a policy that you enforce on a subscriber or on a particular application flow of that subscriber. No matter which of the many actions that Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager takes, for example, controlling access, enforcing usage quotas, or reporting information about data flows, all those actions and the decisions to take those actions are made with policies. In this section, we'll briefly walk through the basics of how you create an enforcement policy and rules. When you create an enforcement policy in the Big IP configuration utility, only a name for the policy is required. You can also provide a description and enable or disable the policy. The transactional setting applies only to HTTP and specifies whether the policy is enforced on every HTTP transaction or only the first HTTP transaction. Clicking Finished creates the policy and stops. Clicking Create and Add a Rule continues to the next step, creating rules for the policy. The rule page is divided into three main sections. General properties, where you specify the name and precedence of the rule. Precedence is used to resolve conflicts that may occur when a policy has multiple rules. The conditions that must be met for the rule to apply, specified by classification, URL, flow, and custom. Note that the settings that you make on each of these tabs are cumulative. That is, content is filtered by the settings you make on the classification tab, and the URL tab, and the flow tab, etc. And finally, the actions to be performed when the conditions that you specify are met. Let's go through the four tabs in the conditions section in more detail. There are four tabs that you can use to specify the conditions that must be met for a rule to take effect. Classification, URL, Flow, and Custom. Let's take a look at the settings that you can make on each of those tabs. On the Classification tab, in the Category dropdown, you can select a category of applications, for example, webmail applications, against which you want to test traffic. If you want to be more specific within that category, in the Application dropdown, you can also select a particular application, for example, Gmail. Click Add to add the application category or individual application to the rules classification criteria. As configured, this rule tests for Gmail application traffic and takes whatever action you specify if Gmail traffic is detected. We'll discuss actions a little later. For now, let's move on to the URL tab. On the URL Categorization tab, you can define a URL category on which to filter. For example, as part of a parental controls offering, you might select the Adult and Pornography URL category to prevent access to web content that has been classified as such. Note that URL categorization is a separately licensed feature of Policy Enforcement Manager, so it may not be available on all installations. On the Flow tab, you can define Layer 4 flow conditions the traffic must meet or must not meet for your policy rule to apply. For example, a rule that you create could test all traffic to see if it is directed to a particular destination port. If you don't specify the source address mass combination or the destination address mass combination, PEM applies a default value of 0.0.0.0/0, that is, all traffic matches. If the source port or destination port values are left blank, PEM matches against all ports. Be careful when using flow matching. It is a powerful tool, but if incorrectly configured, it can seriously reduce system performance. 
On the last of the four tabs, the Custom tab, you can implement specialized filtering criteria not otherwise available. If traffic meets the conditions specified in a rule, the rule takes the specified actions. At the bottom of the new rule screen, you specify which actions to take. The elements that appear in the actions area depend on the settings that you configured earlier, so different actions are available depending on the classification settings that you make. But here are some common settings options. Reporting specifies whether to send reporting data concerning traffic affected by the rule to an external analytics system or to a PCRF. When this separately licensed feature is enabled, you can use quota to track a subscriber's resources quota. For example, a user might have a quota of 500 megabytes of audio video traffic. Gate specifies whether the traffic is passed or dropped. Forwarding specifies where to forward the traffic affected by the rule. Modify header specifies that the HTTP request header of incoming traffic should be modified. Then, scrolling down, QoS can specify whether to set a variety of quality of service settings. And finally, Custom Action enables a policy enforcement I rule or enables you to create a new one. This lesson, you learned about enforcement policies, enforcement policy rules, and how they are created in Policy Enforcement Manager. You learned that policies consist of rules, and that rules have conditions that must be met to be valid, and actions that occur when those conditions are met. In the final lesson, you'll see how policies and rules are applied. In this lesson, you'll see how to use the skills that you developed in earlier lessons, for example using the configuration utility and TMSH to create and apply policies and rules to implement a solution with Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager. Suppose that a service provider's peak delivery speed for all services for all subscribers is 20 megabits per second. However, marketing research reveals that a significant number of subscribers want higher speeds, primarily for audio and video download. A new premium service offering will use Policy Enforcement Manager to give those subscribers 100 megabits per second for data traffic that is classified as audio and video, and 40 megabits per second for peer-to-peer -peer and web traffic. Implementing the new premium high bandwidth service is basically a three-step process. Create a new bandwidth controller for the premium tier, configure the bandwidth controller, and create an enforcement policy and rules. We'll walk through those steps now. The first step is to create a new bandwidth controller. To do that, exit the Policy Enforcement section of the Configuration Utility and click Acceleration, and then click the Create button on Bandwidth Controllers. Give the new bandwidth controller a name and set the maximum rate, meaning the maximum amount of bandwidth that the controller can use, to its highest setting of 320 gigabits per second. Enable dynamic properties, and set maximum rate per user to the new service's maximum rate of 100 megabits per second. Click Finished. The new premium service bandwidth controller appears alongside the standard service controller in the bandwidth controller list. Remember that the new service you're creating gives premium service subscribers increased bandwidths of 100 megabits per second for audio and video and 40 megabits per second for P2P and web traffic. Now that you have created the new premium service bandwidth controller, you can set up those increased bandwidth properties by configuring the bandwidth controller. In the bandwidth controller list, click the name of the new premium service controller. The properties page opens. In the categories field at the bottom of the page, click add, then add a category named audio video.
Set the max category rate to 100% to give the audio video applications 100% of the allowed bandwidth or 100 megabits per second and click finished. The bandwidth controller's property screen displays the new policy category. You'll recall that the new high bandwidth service offering gave subscribers 100 megabits per second for audio video and 40 megabits per second for web and P2P traffic. In the interest of brevity, we'll go ahead and add those two categories for you now. To implement Bandwidth Controller for the new Premium Bandwidth tier of subscribers, you must create a new policy for that tier. You'll do that in the following simulation. In the following simulation, you'll go through the entire process of creating a new enforcement policy and policy rules to implement the new Premium Bandwidth offering. To create the new policy that confers higher bandwidth to subscribers, in the Configuration Utility, at Policy Enforcement Policies, click the green Create button. The new policy screen appears. We'll fill in the name of the new policy for you. Now click Create and Add Rule. The new rule screen appears. We'll type the name of the rule for you. Next, we'll assign a value of 1 for precedence. Now in the classification settings, click the category dropdown. In the list of category options, click Audio Video. Now click the Add button. The Audio Video category is added to the list of classification criteria. Now click the Flow tab. The Flow tab settings appear. In the Action settings, in the QoS Downlink section, click the Bandwidth Controller drop-down. Click Premium Service BWC to make it the Bandwidth Controller for this policy rule. A new drop-down labeled Category appears. Click on the drop-down arrow. In the list of options, click Audio Video. Now click the Bandwidth Controller drop-down in the Uplink section. Just as you did for the downlink setting before, now click Premium Service BWC for the uplink bandwidth controller. Click the Category drop-down. Click the Audio Video option. You have completed the action settings for the new Audio Video Policy Rule. Click Finished. The new policy rule appears in the list of rules for the premium bandwidth policy. Two more rules need to be added to configure the P2P and web settings for the policy. We'll add those for you now. Here you can see the premium bandwidth policy with its three policy rules. Next, you'll enable a subscriber with a new higher bandwidth settings by applying the policy to a subscriber. Let's use TMSH to take a look at the new policy. 
This time we'll start in TMSH at the PEM prompt. Type the command list policy premium bandwidth and view the results. All the settings for the new policy and its three rules are displayed, including the settings for filtering by classification, precedence, and data rate. Now type modify subscriber the subscriber's international mobile subscriber identifier policies add premium bandwidth to apply the policy to the subscriber that you created earlier. Typing list subscriber in the subscriber's MZ reveals that the subscriber has had the new policy added and so will now have access to the enhanced bandwidth service. configuration utility to set up some basic functionality in Policy Enforcement Manager, including configuring a bandwidth controller, creating an enforcement policy, and creating enforcement policy rules. You also saw how to use TMSH to view subscriber and policy settings at the command line. That completes this brief introduction to getting started with Big IP Policy Enforcement Manager. Want to learn more? Click the Resources tab as course in the Getting Started series. Remember that there are lots of other Getting Started courses available on F5 University.